It's the 29th of October and I'm Tom Glass and welcome to The Roast. Tonight, the government has increased the cost of fuel despite not having Senate approval, which makes for a nice twist on the usual move, implementing policies without voter approval. And while ignoring the Senate might not seem like the best idea, when you remember who's in the Senate, you realise it's a bloody fantastic idea. Here's Mark Avery's with the headlines. Universities, the places you attend to gain a greater understanding of how much alcohol you can consume, were the focus of Senate discussion today as negotiations over fee deregulation got underway. Education Minister Christopher Pine told Parliament yesterday that he'll be able to achieve his reforms by working with the Palmy United Party. And it sounds like discussions are going just swell. No, I just think you should write to Christopher Pine and tell him he's a mongrel. Don't worry, Clive, I'm pretty sure Pine is feeling the heat. <laughs> Palmer told Triple J's hack program that his senators will block the government's deregulation plans because he wants to make sure education is affordable for everyone. Clive knows that without education, you end up with people like this. Well, I think um, when it comes to um, Shari, Shari law, um, you know, to me, it's... Um, it's uh, it obviously involves terrorism. But don't worry about Clive Palmer, Chris. Your colleagues have your back. The government's own senators have called on Education Minister Christopher Pine to rethink his plan to charge university students a real interest rate on their HEX loans. This may shock you, but I get the impression not a lot of people like Christopher Pine. And worse yet, someone else is opposing the changes. Opposition leader Bill Shorten, seen here waiting patiently for a university lecture that will never begin, released a video today declaring his opposition to the plans. G'day, I'm Bill Shorten. Who? Why did I get into politics? To impress your mother-in-law? Because I believe in a fair go for all Australians. Now, I've done a lot of listening. Oh, that's what you've been doing. I thought you just gave up. Many of you have told me this is a big concern. So Labor will fight to stop Mr Abbott's $100,000 degrees. It's the only fair thing to do. See how it will affect you at nodebtsentence.org. NoDebtSentence.org. By far the worst thing about being in opposition, losing those precious .gov URLs. Prime Minister Tony Abbott addressed business leaders in Sydney last night, because sometimes you just need to be among friends. He used the opportunity to argue for urgent reform of the tax system. No reasonable person thinks that our current tax system is the best we can do. Sounds like someone just got a shitty tax return. And to fix the tax system, Mr Abbott called on the opposition to join his favourite team. I am inviting the Labor Party, the state governments, to join Team Australia. So Team Australia is now not just playing the national security game, they're also playing the economic reform game. Team Australia is the Elise Perry of Australian politics. But unlike Elise Perry, no one respects Team Australia. Not to be outdone, Labor Senator Stephen Conroy is starting his own team. I'm a member of Team Fairness. Thanks, Dork. And finally, Marvel Studios has announced release dates for 11 new films. In other words, Marvel has just announced 11 new Stan Lee cameos. For The Roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thank you, Mark. Well, everyone loves complaining about the cost of petrol, almost as much as they love complaining about the bizarre selection of DVDs available at petrol stations. I mean, who the hell stops off for a full tank and a copy of Triple X State of the Union? And it's just as well we like to bitch about petrol because in two weeks' time, we'll all be paying more for it. That's because Finance Minister Matthias Cormann, seen here sounding out his words, has found a way to increase fuel tax without having to deal with that pesky parliament. The federal government doesn't have the numbers to pass an increase in the fuel excise, so it's using special powers to effectively bypass the parliament. Oh, good, because we've got to keep that pesky parliament from getting its mitts on our laws. This is not an effort to get uh, around the Senate. Oh, yes, it is. Mm, well, they both make good points. So what, governments can just do whatever they like through regulation now? The regulations will need to be backed up with proper legislation by the Senate within 12 months, or the money raised will have to be refunded. Oh, good. I mean, I've always said I'd like to fill in more tax return forms. Matthias Cormann warned that the extra revenue would be paid back to fuel companies, not to motorists. Oh, well, I'm just glad someone's getting my money. It'd be a shame if it just wasted time sitting in my bank account. And like all good Abbott ideas, this hits the poor the hardest. But if there's one thing this government knows about poor people... The poorest people either don't have cars or actually don't drive very far in many cases. So where's the revenue going if the Senate does pass it? 
The government says every cent will be spent on new roads. Meaning electric car owners will be using our roads without paying for them. Lousy forward-thinking freeloaders. Honestly, this doesn't sound very fair. Come into my realm, Thomas. Um, I'm all good here. Heal! Oh, God! The, the Devil's Advocate. Welcome to my realm. Why are there so many copies of Triple X State of the Union in your realm? Because this is hell, Tom, mm. okay? Now listen, the fuel excise is the best thing this government has ever done. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Jerks drive cars. What, you can't say that? Lots of people drive cars. Paramedics, taxi drivers, me. And you're all selfish assholes, zooming around town on your million-year-old bone juice. Who do you think you are, Tom? Senna, the world's fastest Indian? Driving Miss Daisy? You're rapidly running out of this petrol stuff, Tom. You should be paying a premium price, if only to get you pathetic mortals onto something a little more environmentally friendly. Oh, oh, wait. Do you hear that, Tom? That's the sound of a budget emergency. So this sounds like crunching. Oh, no, that's the DVDs. Oh, sorry. Hey, wait, no, no, that's worth $4.50 to a server. So you're saying that the government might cut something more important if this doesn't pass? Silence! And yes. Also, this tax will help your environment. Reintroducing it, they argue, would be good for the federal government's finances and for the environment. It's a form of carbon tax that might prompt motorists to cut back on their fuel use. So Abbott's actually backing a form of carbon tax? Yes, but sure, don't encourage him, the Greens. He's only taxing that thing you hate. He's only trying to keep your precious planet alive. Yeah, but it is still a rise to the cost of living. It's going to affect nearly every single person in the country. Yes, I hear it's going to cost an absolute fortune. The government says it'll cost the average family 40 cents a week. 40 cents a week is a small price to pay to help the planet and not have to drive on dirt. And even if it's 10 times that much, it's still less than you save with those shopper dockets that you keep on your fridge and forget to use. Now leave my realm. Ah! And take a copy of the film. Ah! You know what? Sexy Halloween costume Nick did have some salient points. I think I need to rethink some things. We'll, uh, we'll be right back. Have you ever gone to the people whose job it is to provide differing opinions and bypass them because their opinions differed from yours? How did you do that? Did you use a cheat code? Was it up, up, down, left, triangle, square, X? Or did you just say, f*** you guys, I'm outie? We'd love to hear about it. At the Roast TV or hashtag Roast TV. So how do the other parties feel about the government bypassing the Senate? Well, it's not as simple as you might think. You see, Labor and the Greens are opposing the tax increase on fuel, and the Abbott government is supporting it. And before you say, it's a world gone topsy-turvy, let Alex Lee say it for you, because she worked all day on this. Last year, things were so simple. Labor made the decisions, the coalition said no, and the Greens took the credit for anything that passed the hung parliament. But after the election, Abbott gave up his starring role as opposition Abbott, and everything changed. So when it came to the fuel excise, something the Greens would normally support, the Greens chose politics over those pesky principles that had been holding them back all this time, and did what Abbott used to do best. They said no. So now the Coalition have found themselves supporting a tax that helps the environment, while the Greens have deforested their own conscience and said they'll block a tax increase on fossil fuels. But maybe it's a smart move. Trees don't vote for the Greens, and now no one will. Thank you, Alex. Honestly, more twists and turns than a game of Twister between Christopher Nolan and M. Night Shyamalan. So it seems like a lot of fuss over 40 cents a week, but then again, what do I know? I mean, how far can you get on 40 cents worth of petrol? Go. You sure? Yeah. Hit it. Do you reckon one of those kind policemen will give us a push over the cliff? Oh, shut up. And if people just paid the damn fuel tax, there'd be a brand new bridge over that damn canyon. Still, I suppose trying to drive off a cliff with just 40 cents of fuel in the tank was always going to be a high-risk move. But then again, the government can relate to that. They've only got 12 months to get the fuel excise increase through the Senate, or they have to pay all that tax revenue back. Not to us, though, to the people who really need it, oil companies. Roll the damning evidence. Well, who the hell am I? You're the new triple X. No, that's the wrong tape, not this... Oh. 
You guys know that oil companies are evil. You don't need to, you know, good night.